You might remember me doing a series called My Favorite Weapons with Battlefield 4. Well, I've decided to revive that series for Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 has been pretty up and down through its history. It's been out for just short of a year now, and uh, it's starting to actually get the updates that I think it always needed. But today, we're going to bring you the M1909 Benay Mercy Telescopic Variant. Now, the Benay Mercy is very underused in this game. I feel like it's very strong. I have a great time playing with it. I wish it had a low weight version, but you know, you can't get everything you want. So, I use a telescopic. It works for me. It's one of my favorite weapons. It might not be one of yours, but it definitely works for me. So, a little bit of background on the weapon. It was developed by Hotchkiss. You may know the name. Anyone that's followed World War I at all knows the name Hotchkiss. It was out of France in 1909. It was used by all the Allied forces in the war. Most countries made their own modifications. The weapon was not actually that well received due to its odd strip style magazine, which was prone to jamming. You've got all those bullets exposed to the elements. They're going to get wet. They're going to get muddy. They're going to get sandy. It's going to get really gritty. It's not good for it. Statistically, in this game, the damage is going to be a 23 max and a 19 minimum. This means you've got a 5 to shot kill at any range, and it's actually one of my favorite things about this weapon, is that it's so consistent. Its fire rate is 450, which means at close range you're going to get destroyed by the automatico, shotgun, whatever, unless the player you're playing against is a scrub lord. The muzzle velocity is 820, which makes landing those long range shots pretty easy. Its magazine is 30 rounds, which is good, because if you land all your shots, you can get 5 to 6 kills. Will you land all your shots? Probably not. But the recoil definitely makes it easy to. It's got a .28 up, .12 left, and .12 right, and a 1.25 first shot multiplier off the trigger. So, not bad recoil at all. And its reload speed, and this is critical, this is one of the largest weaknesses of this weapon, is a 3.9 second reload when the weapon is empty. When the weapon still has a round in the chamber, it's 2.6 seconds. So that's just, over, just under half the time if there's still rounds in the weapon. So you need to make sure when you're reloading or whatever that you have rounds in the chamber. Yes, firing longer gives you more accuracy, but not to the point where you should mag dump. Okay, don't mag dump with this weapon or you're going to be reloading constantly. Now, I am a chronic reloader. After I fire five rounds, I reload. Should I do that? Probably not, but I do it anyway. It's a hard habit to break, and I'm trying to break myself of it, so we'll see how that goes. But my preferred loadout for this weapon is going to be the 2.5 magnification scope on the gun. I'm going to use the recoil, the recoil direction I'm going to use is going to be up, obviously. Why would anybody go left or right? I still haven't quite figured that out yet. The I prefer as a sidearm the number three revolver. It works for me. You might have your own choice. The 1911 is still really popular. I also like the C93. Uh, I prefer running the ammo box over the ammo pouch because this is going to be more of a stationary playstyle. And uh, I like the frag grenade launcher. Um, the high explosive one is really good too, especially if you're playing in a heavy building map and you can bring down buildings where people are hiding. But the frag one works for me most of the time. And then I use the light anti tank grenade or the incendiary round. Uh, for the melee, again, your choice. I use the club. You'll see it in the video. It works. As far as the play style with this goes, I play as a general support. Okay, I'm going to be the mid-range, backline guy. I'm supplying. I do a lot of, uh, I hang out with a lot of snipers, actually, and have to keep them supplied, keep them suppressed. I play right on the edge of the objective. I'm usually going to be inside the bubble in a building, inside the burn radius, working to keep chokes clear, you know, spot what I can, hammer any priority targets. I'd like to try to always take down medics and support players first. You know, the assault players, no, I'll let somebody else handle them because I'm not going to get up close enough to hurt them. They're probably going to just shred me with their automaticos, shoddies, whatever, what have you. Now, this is not going to be a choke point style weapon. This is an individual target gun. Now, what does that mean? This is not one of the suppressive variants. Similar to the BAR, you've got a limited number of rounds and you have to be able to deploy them accurately. So, setting up on a choke point like a bridge or anything is not going to necessarily be good for you. This is almost an assault rifle. You can hang out with, you know, other, with medics or snipers and play that mid-range game with them, keep them supplied. I would suggest a different weapon if you want to be the frontline support player. It's like the BAR or the Madsen. Get up there with those, yes, mix it up. But that's not how I prefer to play. I don't have the crazy stick skills. You know, I'm not great like that. I don't have the reflexes. I want to stay back. I want to pick my targets. I want to engage when I want to engage, not when you want to engage. But anyway, that's just my personal thoughts. You know, stay in buildings. Stay behind cover. Get that bipod down. The thing's a laser with the bipod. Use it and just hammer those targets as many times as it takes to get them down. But 
that's pretty much all I've got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's really good to be back on YouTube, and I hope all of you have a great day. Goodbye.